Hi, I'm Jessica Johnson, and I'm really excited to be teaching kinship and slash in strangeness. I want to read a poem that embodies some moments of tension around metaphor, figurative language, and association. And that's The Marrow from Rick Barrett's The Galleons. The Marrow. For a time, I lived in a house with a meadow and small woods around it. It was summer, the light changing the meadow over the long day, as though to illustrate the phases of consciousness. The gold of morning, the stricken green at noon, the shadows saturated by coolness in the evening. Butterflies like small yellow utility flags cross the light. And the sounds of insects and birds, little strings of notes on staves. Deer appeared, disclosing this fact. If you don't have hands, you use your mouth. Like clockwork, two kept coming back each morning to the same spots, as though the grass they ate the day before had sprung back overnight. They were deer. Because I was not sick or in need, they were only deer. Behind the glass of the house, I must have been a small distortion in the reflection they saw there, a small motion in the surface. In the woods were wild roses with pink edges going white into their centers. Under the large trees, the ferns were a dense singularity, the span of each frond a kind of fractal logic. I saw things mostly as they were, which meant a kind of health. The nights were dark, as though the house was far inland in the marrow of geography. But just beyond the house and the meadow was the ocean, which you could hear if you listened. This poem that is partially about the impulse to refuse metaphor, or at least about the speaker's reluctance to join a metaphor that's forming in the poem, is also full of metaphor and questions of refusal of particular metaphors were on my mind when I wrote Rabbits, which was in an issue of Sixth Finch last year. Rabbits. A certain kind of work enlists the whole mind in its hardness and wears down all shapes but its own. When I gave birth to the girl 10 years ago, I nursed anxiety too. A little animal, the shape of what might happen. The shape of the girl, but wrong, conjured in visions of the girl going blue or tipping head first into the tub and me, not there to pluck her out. If you have tits, you have to feed who's there. So I was raised. And so the blue thing grew, weight of my failing, scent of every not enough, too much, didn't make it, the girl might well inherit. But what's true is better than I've known how to see, real as a poem trying to be written, a whole world that flutters to shreds if I enter it, attending to too much. When I can arrange it so there isn't too much work, I take the real and true girl to the coast where the pines twist improbably and storybook rabbits, blue and black, pinto and roan, graze beside the parking lot and return to their blackberry thicket under the freeway where they must die all the time and also live. The fierce Pacific erupts in lines of white mist. The girl's hair levitates around her face. The weather comes hard and stays as long as it needs to. And we sit on a wet log watching what might happen, happening, happening, beautiful. So using essays by Natasha Trethewey and T. Clutch Fleischman for general overall framing, we'll inventory and celebrate and practice many forms of associative language, including some you might not think of as, as such, and talk about the impulse to refuse it and the ethics of using it, which I think are often about relationships. And you'll leave with resource poems and essays exercises and prompts, and hopefully some ways to think through that moment when 
you're wondering if the deer is just a deer or not. 